Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Gaia Manukian. I'm the online editor for FINDEF Gateway. And today I'm happy to welcome you to the second in the series of three webinars focused on digital transformation of MFIs. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a couple of logistics. Um, please uh, be advised that this is a um, an online session, um, audio session, which means your microphones will remain muted throughout the entire presentation. This does not mean, however, that we don't want you to get engaged. Please use the chat box on the right-hand side of your screen to submit your questions and comments, and we'll get to them at the end of the session. When you do submit your comments, please select all participants to make sure that we receive your uh, information from you. The webinar recording will be um, shared with all of the attendees and registrants at the end. And um, if you have any questions, if you'd like to connect offline, please feel free to do so. We will share our contact information in the end. With that said, here is our moderator, Hera Wurips. Thank you, Gaia. Uh, well, welcome to uh, all participants of this webinar, it's great to have you. And a special welcome to all the panelists. They will now briefly introduce themselves and then we can also directly practice with the mute and unmute button. So please go ahead, Andre. Hi, this is André Simon. I am the CEO of Finca Impact Finance. It is lovely to be here with you all this morning. Hi, this is Pierre-Marie Simon. I'm a Digital Finance Program Manager for Baobab, and I welcome everyone for this seminar. Hello, this is Fazlul Haq, Senior Director Hadida Foundation from Bangladesh. Hello, everyone. This is Lesi Flores, and I'm the Research and Develop uh, Development Manager at Banco Popular from Honduras. Okay, welcome, everybody. So my name is Gera Forips, and uh, since 2017, I work for Triple Jump in the advisory services team, focusing on uh, Africa and uh, Middle East digital transformation and digital financial services has been a key topic for my uh i'm going to the next slide first let me try this yes digital fi financial services was a key topic of my work with financial institutions so i'm also very excited um, that we have this panel of microfinance peers which we can further elaborate uh, on the topic because I think that's the best way to learn about it from, from each other. Now, change management has also been emphasized, emphasized a lot in these panels and it also became already clear in the, in the first round that it's not only about technology, it's, it's also about people, digital transformation. I think, so we're going to dig further into that today. Uh, we will first have a brief introduction of the various panelists on the, their financial institution and how they're using technology. And after that, we will zoom in uh, more deeply on the lessons learned. We have uh, an ambitious target set for one hour, so we'll try to uh, restrict the webinar to that. But if we uh, need some 10 minutes more, uh, I would. Uh, I already apologize up front and uh, would like to ask you to, to bear with us. A few words on, on what is digital transformation. Um, this is how we look at it from the point of view of a triple jump. Uh, we always emphasize it's not only about technology, it really requires a comprehensive approach. A successful digital transformation starts from a deep understanding of the client and how we can improve their life and uh, financial services for them using technology. It always also requires you to re fundamentally rethink your strategy um, on how you deliver services and uh, on how your organization is set up. Maybe that also is required to change. 
IT is of course a key, a key enabler because that makes it possible to support uh, paperless or cashless uh, operations and to hopefully improve customer convenience or help you realize operational efficiency. And finally, uh, the people and capacity dimensions is also uh, important. Your staff needs to embrace the digital ways of working and feel comfortable with it and feel it has the capacity to do so because they are the first link to support also your customer in enjoying the benefits of the, of the technology. So digital transformation really requires a holistic uh, approach working on all those different uh, building blocks. So let's now quickly move to hear what our panelists can share us about this uh, topic. First of all, Andre Simon from uh, Finca Impact Finance will share their experiences. I hope Andre is unmuted. Uh, let's see. All right, Gara, is it working now? Yes, I can hear you fine. Okay. Thanks. Sorry, I, um, I, I'd like to think that I'm good at technology given that I'm talking about it today, but um, apparently I'm not. <laughs> um, so, so I will give a very quick overview of, of Finca. Um, I hope that most of the participants um, have at least some understanding of, of how we are structured and what we do. So the focus of Finca has been for over 35 years uh, on delivering microfinance services in relatively small denominations. So our average loan size is still um, less than $1,000 across the entire network. Um, we have um, microfinance um, uh, banks around in 20 countries around the world. Um, just over half of them are deposit-taking institutions. And um, the portfolio to date is around 821 million. Um, the, you know, the, the reality is that um, I think everyone who started in the kind of microfinance that we do at Finca has always had a very labor-intensive model. And so um, when digitization um, started coming uh, into our space, we were, as everyone else, I think, hugely enthusiastic about what it could enable us to do vis-a-vis -vis our clients. Um, as everyone knows, um, the biggest expense associated um, with that traditional model of microfinance is the fact that it is heavily dependent on manual labor. Um, and a lot of that is driven by, honestly, transit times um, for credit staff and for clients um, to, to get to locations where services can be delivered. And so the notion that we could um, come up with some technology solutions and, and mobile banking in particular uh, to, to eliminate a lot of that and make it much more accessible for people um, was thrilling. Um, we have learned an awful lot, and that's why I'm excited to be on this panel with all of you today. Um, I, I certainly won't say that we have learned more than everybody else, um, but um, in just a short two-year period as an institution, and I don't know, Gary, if you can move to the next Oh, Seth's going to move to the next page. Um, you know, we have built a lot of rails um, in technology. So across the entire network, um, over 55% of our transactions are now via branchless channels. And so that includes um, uh, mobile, obviously, but also includes agency um, and includes, of course, um, ATM networks as well. Um, in Africa in particular, and I think that's where um, a lot of us are focusing the transformation in terms of digitization. Um, over 51% of our transactions are now um, via agents, and um, that is heavily dominated by our operations in um, the DRC, uh, where we have Finca branded agents um, that are exclusive to us um, that we are working with, um, but we have a lot of experience with all of the different models. Um, and and f for us, before I even move on to kind of what we have achieved, um, I, I think that um, that building block um, to agency um, as the most rational solution um, for our clients 
um, has been really critical and defined a lot of our strategy around digitization because what we realized, um, if you look at the next point on this page, um, we launched mobile um, in nine of our subsidiaries. So we have um, either wallets or mobile banking or a combination thereof. And um, what we realized was that um, it was a great offering um, for a lot of our clients because it does provide them with rapid information um, about their bank accounts and in many instances the capacity to make payments um, from the comfort of their homes or their businesses. Uh, and uh, it, and uh, that was fantastic, but um, most of the economies that we work in are still very heavily cash dependent, and the bulk of the clients that we work with um, still have that very strong need um, to get relatively small amounts of cash in and out of the system on a day-to-day -day basis. And so for us, Mobile is actually not the core focus for our institution at this time, although we know that we have to have that capacity, but it is really um, building the roadway all the way to agents and then enabling our agents to use technology um, to interact with and support our clients. And I can talk more about that um, certainly in the lessons learned, but then also in the Q&A. Um, we do have two of our subsidiaries that are doing internet banking. Um, and, and again, um, I think that's where for an institution like Finca, there is no one single digital solution for the markets that we operate in because we need to meet the needs of our clients. And so most of the places where we work, internet banking is not a solution that is really useful to the majority of our clients. But in our Eurasia subsidiaries in particular, um, we have found that actually um, internet banking is something that our clients really do need. And so we've gone ahead and implemented that there. Um, so I think for us, um, just to kind of recap the whole thing, um, the, the, you know, the path that we've taken um, was originally focused on that mobile banking solution. And, and without a doubt, I think everyone needs to have mobile banking solutions um, ready to deploy in the future um, specific to the target audiences that we're trying to work with. But what we have found is that the building blocks to get to that point um, take us back m much closer and really into the, the back office more so um, where we're getting a lot of efficiency. So the focus for us has been on putting in place the credit decisioning that ultimately will power mobile, but in the near term has a real effect on efficiency. Um, centralizing or underwriting, um, again, associated with that credit decisioning so that we can speed our processes um, and make them more efficient. And then leveraging tablets um, as the primary interface with our clients who maybe don't have access to smartphone technology as the principal tool to reduce paperwork, speed the process, be able to communicate directly with the credit bureaus in the field, geolocate our clients, um, and fundamentally make it not only a simpler process for them, but also use that tablet to educate them about um, how that technology can be effective for them as well going forward. So I'll stop there for now and let my other colleagues um, pr present their institutions and then hopefully we can come back to some of that in the lessons learned. Thank you very much, Andre. It was a very interesting uh, overview of Finca's experience where it's very great to see that you are experienced in the channels agency banking, mobile, even internet banking, and having great ambitions regarding automating the client onboarding. Faslu. The floor is yours to uh, share what you have uh, experienced with Sajida Foundation in Bangladesh. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. Uh, this is Fazlul Haq from Bangladesh. Perhaps you know that Bangladesh is a very densely populated country, and the microfinance, you know, it is said that Bangladesh has been the birthplace of microfinance. Shazida Foundation started, you know, uh, 26 years back. The microfinance, you know, activity, you know, um, then eventually, I mean, uh, we have, you know, around 300,000 clients, you know, in, uh, you know, 50% of, of, 
uh, of the 50% districts of the country. And, you know, the current, you know, the portfolio, loan portfolio is around, you know, $200 million, you know. And we have different categories of, you know, loan and the small loan. The size is, you know, uh, let's say, you know, $400. And we have some enterprise loan and the average loan size is, you know, $200. And, you know, the savings is very much, you know, embedded in the microfinance operations in Bangladesh. And in Bangladesh, you know, the loan installment, you know, I mean, we used to collect you know, the loan installment from the group meetings, you know, and previously, you know, every program, you know, people used to come and, you know, deposit money, they can also, you know, propose, you know, loans, you know, and also they can discuss, you know, the other social issues, you know. So, but, you know, last, you know, 10 years, there has been a new petition of you know the mobile money i mean the mobile you know and almost everybody you know was having the mobile space you know uh, but you know i mean as our microfinance operation in the country was very much human centric so the uh, uh, the mobile money it was not very much you know popular you know and as you know that you know people of bangladesh you know i mean it is a you know underdeveloped country you know so the literacy rate is very low so people are not very much used to do you know uh, 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 the mobile mobile money, but eventually, you know, they are becoming familiar. So we did a, a small you know, study and found that people, you know, they started, you know, a, a mobile money just, you know, by sending money from one place to another place. So then, you know, uh, from 2015, uh, uh, in a partnership supported by the MetLife Foundation and the technically guided by Bankable Frontiers Associates of USA. You know, we designed a very kind of, you know, uh, uh, innovative, you know, microfinance, I mean, the digital, digital money or mobile money, you know, uh, operation. So what we did, uh, uh, and there is, you know, uh, in Bangladesh, two, you know, larger kind of mobile money operators. One is called Bcash and another is called Rocket. So the, 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 uh, uh, you know, Bcash was very much popular, you know. Uh, so we started with, you know, Bcash and wanted to make it cashless, you know. I mean, starting from department to loan collection, you know. So you started, you know, sending from the master wallet to the individual wallet of the clients, you know. So, I mean, uh, and they can, they can cash out from the nearby agent, you know. And in Bangladesh, there are, you know, 100,000, you know, uh, agents of, you know, Bcash. So we piloted it in 15, you know, branch offices with 20,000 people, you know. Uh, then, you know, there was some embargo from the government, you know, to, I mean, the limit or the make, make the cap of cash out. So then, I mean, it was difficult for us to disperse any money because, you know, the one client has to go to the agents, you know, three, four times. And, you know, I mean, they would, I mean, require like two months to, cash out, you know, from the agent. So that was a troublesome, you know, for, for the micro, uh, mobile money operation. Then we started, you know, this mobile money with another mobile money operators called Rocket. You know, I mean, the system is different. It is, I mean, uh, we stopped, you know, disbursement, but we thought that it would be better to collect installments, you know, through this mobile money. So what we did, we introduced a card, you know, with a unique number and you know I mean, there were agents so they used to go to the agents and show up there and the was given, you know, kind of in a small software you know uh, given by this rocket you know and what we did uh, uh, you know perhaps you, perhaps you know that you know the software of the banks or the mobile money operator and you know, it was in the language was different so I mean and the uh, uh, issue of access, you know, to their software was a challenge. So what we did, we made a kind of, you know, middleware so that we can pull or push, you know, data from their software and see that who is, you know, paying on time and who is not. And this software was also with the, with the uh, credit officials. They could also monitor that who is paying, who is not, you know. So it went very well and people were very much, you know, enthusiastic. And the staff, they got, you know, enough time to, you know, 
uh, uh, give time for client acquisition move, and you know, uh, and and they had also you know free time to to get you know more clients, you know. So that was the kind of and uh, benefit to the to the uh, to the staff. And what other benefits the organ I mean from the organization? What we found that you know that you know the uh, you know mismatch of the cash and also you know the mistrust you know sometimes we we have seen that some of the clients you know those who were engaged in business activities they didn't go to the uh, meeting for paying their installment rather they wanted to send other people to carry their money so it you know there was some mishaps you know so that reduced you know so instead i mean whenever they used to send money or uh, you know pay the installment they got sms alert you know from the system and every month we used to give them a kind of monthly statement so they 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 became assured that their money is deposited you know to to um, um, to our organizations so what well, we did that yeah it was very, it was very yeah it was very good that sounds like a very interesting use of uh, technology and mostly using the telephone to allow bill payments or let's say uh, loan installments by your clients, but also having a smart way of ensuring um, a straight through processing towards your uh, internal systems. Let's yeah. now continue further with uh, Lessie and Pierre-Marie to also introduce their um, use of technology. And then I'm sure we'll get back to you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning, everyone. Lessie Flores. I'm the Regional Investigation Manager at Banco Popular from Honduras. Um, we are a, a financial institution with a full banking license specialized in microfinance. We have approximately 129,000 uh, customers, which are 61,000 loan customers, and uh, managing 77,000 um, annual loan disbursements, approximately. Um, we are the biggest MFI in Honduras, but at the same time, we're the smallest bank um, right now. We, uh, we are a bank that characterizes for, for being passionate in everything we do, that allows us to um, be in the cycle of continuously improving ourselves, especially with this some fourth revolution that's going on that I make, uh, I know that I might be, that everybody knows about this, and um, as many of our colleagues and many of, our, that, of you that are listening, it uh, drives us um, to be even more competitive against bigger investor expanding players. This digital transformation uh, that we are going through um, drives us to reach even more to the, to the bank population of Honduras, um, to reach them and be client-centered so that um, we can uh, we can make we can make the uh, we can um, allow them to have a better um, customer experience uh, every day that they feel that they are important for us that they um, they can make Banco Popular the number one for them and um, and all this can allow us to um, be growth efficient and position our bank um, even better. We started um, with this uh, digitization process 2015 when we started working with a strategic plan in which um, it had a, a, a digital comp uh, component. In 2017, we started working with Finconecta, which is a platform that allows us to reach the different fintechs that are around the world. In, uh, this alliance allowed us to rate the different fintechs that um, could uh, work with us that covers our needs according to the way we work. And we also started the approach of the process management in order to align the processes with the strategic goals that we had um, defined before. And as well as um, this process management, we started with our these consultancy and change management. One of the pillars uh, we believe that we believe involves all this digital transformation uh, are our employees. So um, with this uh, consultancy, they allowed us to make a plan of how we were going to uh, talk to them about digital transformation, uh, how this process allows us to be uh, paperless, and how they are how they are an important process in our in order um, for us to be successful. 
um, make them feel important for us. That not only my area is in, in the, the one in charge of uh, innovating in the bank um, with this digital transformation, either disruptive or not, but um, so they can make so they can work out and uh, with us and, and help us grow. In 2018, uh, we started the system integration with Finconeta. Uh, that was uh, that started in 2017. Um, as well as uh, we start a investigation and development unit, which is my, my area, um, was created. Um, before everything, uh, every, every area would manage their own projects. So with the creation of, of our unit, what we did was that everything was centralized. So all the initiatives that work in the bank, we managed them, uh, but with the help of every, everybody. As, as I said before, for us, everybody is important. Not only my area is in charge of this transformation. Every, every employee of the bank um, is a part of it. And if they have any idea, any initiative, any process that they believe that can, it can be worked out better, uh, they can do it and they can, they can reach us through this um, platform that we're implementing so that um, we can go and, and digitize. A part of the processes in, in our bank. In 2018 as well, we created partnerships uh, with different companies, um, which um, allows us to have e-wallets with different uh, companies, uh, especially as mobile banking, allowing to reach different uh, our different clients in the country in the countryside, and especially uh, reaching many of our clients that just can't read or can't write. So it's very important for us um, to continue with these partnerships in order for us to give the best experience to our clients. 2019-2020, we're actually working on our pre-design and design our digital transformation. Um, it's something that we, it's continuously, as I said before, it's something that uh, we're trying to, to do every single day. Um, we started with a FinTech implementation. We are actually, we're in our, right now working with three uh, FinTechs. One is in Cleartech, and this is a Colombian fintech, which um, we are working our credit application form through a mobile, mobile device with them. This is a, a process that we digitize, which, are, which, which focuses us on a, giving a better time to our client, and in, but at the, same time, at the same time, we are still a, having a one-to-one -one approach with them so that they can feel that they're important, that we are always at a being so personal with them, we understand them and we know what they want. We are working with DASA. This is a um, Bolivian company, a FinTech, a, which we work our chatbot a, through Facebook. This is where our clients can reach us through Facebook, they can chat with us, but most important is that they can, um, they can apply to different credits through the chatbot. And at the same time, we, um, we're, we're a, a, trying to a, uh, reach them at the minimum time possible. In 2000, in this year, we introduced our uh, term clientecentrismo, which is being client-centered, in which um, we, let, we, we approach our clients uh, with personal, uh, personal services, personal products. Um, we are introducing this um, method with this customer journey, so we can identify the different products that we have, uh, the different products that they need. Because um, as, as I said before, many of our clients cannot read or, or, or write. So it's very important for us because um, we know that not all of our clients uh, are interested in this digitizing process. So um, at the same time, we're trying to reach them, um, not with technology, but with this personal one-to-one uh, -one that, we, that we are aiming to. Uh, which we're trying to make our client as happy because of we've, we've been working with this process and it um, has allowed us to identify the process. For example, um, they would receive, uh, they would apply, approve, and give them money in 24 hours. And now uh, we're aiming in four hours. We have, we have implemented a lot of our, our projects. In Whoa. From 24 hours to four hours. So it's something that at AM they can ask our, our credit uh -huh. advisor. For a loan? That's really impressive. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. 
So um, I think this is, sorry to cut you short, but I'm also managing a bit the time and I'm thinking we want to go to Pierre-Marie. But you, I think you showed very clearly um, that, so you're now working on automated credit applications and one-to-one and -one communication through digital means. And mm -hmm. but you also showed that it takes time from a strategy that you also have to adapt your organization. Um, so I'm sure we'll we'll get back to you later. Pierre Marie, please introduce us to Baobab and how they use technology. Thank you, Hera. Um, so Baobab, uh, for people who don't know, is a financial institution working in ten different countries, mainly in Africa. So our core business is uh, lending money to micro and small SMEs, and uh, we now serve uh, close to one million clients, and we disburse annually one billion uh, euros a year. Um, so Baobab comes from the world of traditional brick and mortar microfinance. Uh, it's pretty much like uh, Andre was uh, describing earlier. You know, it's uh, a lot of cash, a lot of paper, very labor intensive. I mean, just to give you an example, like uh, uh, every month, uh, loan officers uh, disburse 20, 30 loans. And for each of these loans, he fill up uh, 15, 20 pages of paper with his like hands manually. So um, that's just an example um, of uh, how labor intensive it can be. And in branches, you, we, we used to have long wait, uh, well, traditional microfinance. And uh, with uh, the help of technology, we wanted to, to change that. So for us, digital transformation, it's, uh, it's to both do internal and external uh, growth. Uh, by internal, I mean that we want to, to improve our operational efficiency. Uh, to develop better service uh, for our existing clients better, with better quality, so faster, hassle-free uh, uh, products and, and services. Um, because the, the, the previous model is, is painful and costly. It's painful for the clients and it's costly for the institution. So we wanted to improve that, but also explore new uh, business models. And um, basically, with a better use of data and delivery channels, you can uh, find new business models. For example, you can start lending money to new clients powered by a third-party database. So it's disbursing loans with external data. So that's, uh, that's what digital transformation really means for, for Baobab. Um, so um, the next slide I'm showing here, it's, uh, it's the journey. So, of course, I'm not going through the, the whole... Uh, the whole journey, because I, I have like two or three minutes. But basically, we have to see that as like a, a rocket ship. First, you do the you you, you build the base. So the base being uh, your your infrastructure, your data, and uh, your uh, agent network. So um, in two years, we we moved from 150 to to 1,000 uh, points of sale thanks to the the agent network model. We know like where the clients can identify themselves. And access to their account, so that identifies themselves with biometry, biometrics, and so it means that they can access to their account just next door around the corner. They don't have like to travel three, four, five uh, kilometers to, or sometimes ten or twenty, uh, to go to their branch to access their account. So, again, like Andrew was saying, uh, a lot of our clients they need uh, to cash in and cash out their money uh, on a daily basis. So this was uh, um, uh, this agent network is 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 a must-have, I would say. Um, and then, um, if I can just focus on, on two other aspects of this uh, of this slide, is the the offer. So once you have the infrastructure, you can start building your offer. And uh, I think we have had two successful offers at uh, Baobab. Uh, the first one is the the, the score based uh, nano loan for existing customers. Again, this need of a, of a small amount on a, on a on a daily basis. So. Um, so this one was pretty successful. We we, we disbursed like 350,000 of them or just the past, uh, over the past three years. So the idea is that it's a full automated uh, loan uh, for existing customer. So it's SMS and scoring based loan. It's paperless and it takes one minute to process. So that's one example. And the the other example is um, is a automated uh, loan renewal uh, process. So. Um, before, for our uh, existing customer, for our best customer, uh, the process of renewing a loan was still painful, you know. I mean, it's, 
it's it's not as painful as a bank. Uh, it, it doesn't take six weeks, but it takes like one week, two weeks. But and but you're like, wait a minute, we we have a lot of data on these clients. They've been working with us for like four or five years. Uh, we can really trust them. So why not designing a, a process where they can just re renew within ten minutes? And uh, that, that's what we did. And uh, so we built a scoring model for that. And uh, from the point of view, the client, the, the user experience is, is great because they, they receive a notification by SMS telling them you are eligible uh, for a loan of like 5,000 euros. Uh, please come to the branch whenever you want. And they do. And when they come, uh, it's just a few papers to sign, like just a contract. We don't ask guarantors. We don't ask uh, collaterals uh, because we, we, we trust our, our scoring model. Uh, and so the clients are delighted uh, with that. And, and honestly, it's been two years and the, the, the portfolio at risk, which was the, 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 of course, the operations were afraid about, about that, but the portfolio at risk is amazing on this process. So this is another example of offers that we, we, we have done. And I, I will stop uh, here for, for the moment. Okay. Thanks a lot, uh, Pierre-Marie. And meanwhile, um, questions are, are, are being raised. I think before we go to the next round to explore the lessons learned, which after all, of course, is the, the purpose, is, is one of the focus areas. Uh, one question maybe to, to ask to, um, to, um, to Faisal and, and maybe also it's interesting for André and uh, Pierre-Marie to comment on. Um, how has the use of digital payment services uh, affected the uh, aspects like group cohesion? Because that's something that many microfinance institutions considering digital are worried about. So, Faisal, maybe you can briefly yes, comment yes, on that. Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for asking the question. Uh, I mean, uh, the experience is that um, it is a mixed feeling, you know. Because in the uh, in our country, you know, I mean, the most of the clients are the women, and when uh, the microfinance started, you know, the women they didn't have you know so much of work at households, so they could spare time to come to the you know group meeting, you know, every week. But nowadays, you know, you know, the women they are getting engaged in economic activities, so they don't have you know enough time to give to the group meeting. So for them, you know, the mobile money has been very much beneficial, you know, because they don't need to go to the, you know, uh, meeting every week, spending time there, you know. Uh, but there are some people who still, you know, uh, prefer to have the group meeting because they can share their, you know, experiences, their, you know, uh, social problems, you know, seek support from others, you know. Uh, so that is that is missing, you know. So some of them they say that. You know, I mean, the group meeting, group cohesion, you know, it is required, you know, uh, to live in the community. So, uh, uh, but in future, what I feel that, you know, uh, the way the mobile penetration rate is increasing, the way the mobile money is increasing, so people and the, the, uh, the number of people are getting engaged in economic activities, so mobile money will be very much, you know, uh, popular in the coming days. But it's still, it is a mixed feeling. And the regulators, you know, of Bangladesh, it is called micro credit regulatory authority. You know, uh, still they feel that you know that one of the important philosophy is to promote social cohesion. You know, to promote the social capital. So still they. Hey. And the dialogue is going on so that you know they can accept it in the future. Okay. Thanks a lot. I thought uh, I thought Faslu, we were we were losing you. Um, maybe does Andre or uh, um, Andre, do you have anything to add to this this interesting thing? Like we want to promote uh, customer um, customer um, convenience. At the same time, we are a bit uh, worried about losing the the the, the human touch. Uh, yes. Hi, Gara. Can you hear me? <laughs> um, yeah. y yes. Uh, so, uh, like everyone else on the phone call, I think that's probably the thing that makes me lose the most sleep about this transformation. Um, 
and it's why uh, I believe that that agency um, is actually so critical because even though um, we can use mobile for um, lots of the different services that clients need and they don't need to come into the branch and it is much more convenient so they can check their balances, they can make their payments, um, you know, they can en engage in a lot of those transactions. We still want to have that understanding of where they are as individuals. Um, and I think that connection to the community and that, that ultimately, you know, I'm not saying anything that anybody doesn't know, but, um, you know, what makes the village banking approach work and that group methodology work is um, the social accountability. And so having an agent who is representing the institution who is part of that community um, as one place where the client can interact and having that staff with the tablet um, in the community in order to engage with people, I think really is still an essential component. It, it can't be the only delivery mechanism, um, it, but it does have to be the place where that relationship is built until such time as we have managed to recreate using AI um, and SMS uh, some kind of social fabric. And we've seen that that can be done. There are, I think, group applications um, where, um, you know, clients can collaborate um, over a digital interface. Um, but, but fundamentally, uh, I agree very much um, with my colleague, you know, it, it is the biggest worry and it's why we continue to actually invest in our staff on the front line, um, but we're trying to take as much of the manual processes out of their workload as possible and have them solely focused on that client engagement piece. Okay. Thanks a lot, uh, Andra Vaslul. Thanks for the great introductions. I, I think we now have a, a better view on what you uh, are doing uh, using digital means. Um, we, but we also know that digital transformation is not easy and doesn't always go smoothly. Um, so I really would like to move on now to our lessons learned uh, in order to, um, we thought it, it, it will be great to hear from our panelists what are their lessons learned, but we would also be curious about um, our participants in the webinars, what they think or what they have experienced there. Uh, great challenges in their in their journey. So you can uh, see on the right side of your screen in the chat box, you can see a poll. So feel very welcome to to answer it and to uh, don't forget then to push the submit bot button and then we'll, get, we'll compare that also what we learn from the from the panelists. Um, for now, I'm going to invite uh, Andre to uh, elaborate what they learned to close the last mile. Uh, thanks so much, Gara. So I think I've covered um, the first point actually in my prior remarks, and so I won't take up your time talking about it, but it is really important um, to design something that the client actually wants. And so if we had implemented mobile across our entire network instantly, um, as much as I would have loved to, to be able to do that, um, it's actually not what our clients need from us. They're not going to use mobile because of the cost and the infrastructure and that need for cash. Um, they will use it eventually and they will use it sparingly for certain purposes, but fundamentally um, in, in the near term, just like with Baobab, agency is what they need. But for us, the absolute biggest challenge was the change in our culture because we had, you know, a, a, at least a 30-year history when we started this discussion of um, using people only pretty much to interface with our clients. And any time you change people's job descriptions, um, it is an enormous change management effort. And we have over 10,000 staff around the world, and the bulk of them are in the branches and interfacing directly with the clients. And so the minute you start to take decision rights and authority away from people, um, it creates a complexity. And, and so for us, the absolute biggest lesson learned has been around how you communicate the value of making those changes um, to individuals and the transformation of their job um, as being one that ultimately is not only good for the client, 
um, but also is good for them. And the reality is that it's not going to be good for everybody who is participating in the system. Uh, and I think that's something that we have to be pretty honest about. Uh, and so, you know, the, the good news is that transformation doesn't take place overnight. And so um, what we've been focused on is really how do you redefine the roles um, and engineer a communication platform around that redefinition um, so that people will opt in or opt out. And as you're recruiting new staff, and I think everybody has the same challenge of kind of constantly recruiting uh, new staff in all of these markets, uh, it gives you the opportunity to target a different profile that's going to align with more of um, a sales and service orientation than a processing orientation, which is what a lot of um, our team members did in the past. But, but that's for sure the biggest one. Um, and then we talked a little bit already about, well, how to engage your clients differently um, you know, using electronics. And, and isn't it going to be a terrible result if everybody is just communicating over digital? And the honest thing is I think the answer is in the near term for us, certainly yes. Um, we cannot exclusively communicate with our clients over digital because our community identity um, is one of the biggest assets that we have. Um, and so our focus, again, has been on starting in the back office, um, how can we use technology to make things more efficient? And I, I saw there were a lot of questions about that, and I hope we can get to some of them. And then the last thing is really around the support from the policymakers because this is unknown territory for all of us. Um, and um, as much as most of the regulators that we collaborate with are focused on um, financial inclusion, um, they also have a strong accountability to protecting clients. And so as we are going through the process of defining some of these answers, we have found that starting that dialogue with them very early about the knowns and the unknowns and, and having them be side by side with us as we go through pilots has been very beneficial to making sure that um, there's a shared understanding of um, the risks and benefits, um, and, and they've been, as a general rule, very supportive. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, uh, thanks a lot for uh, providing us this insight and focusing very much on the change of culture as the key, key less, a very key lesson. I first like to go over the different lessons learned and then uh, dig deeper. Fazlul, how would you summarize them? Uh, well, I mean, uh, the uh, the lessons that we have, you know, one lesson that I shared already, you know, um, because we need to we need to come up with a different kind of models to interact with the with the people so that you know the social capital is taken care of. This is number one. Number two is, you know, still, I mean, uh, uh, there has been a gap in reading the data of two different softwares, you know, like, you know, the banking software or the mobile money software and our own software. So uh, 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 currently what we have done that we have created a new middleware, you know, which can read, you know, both the languages. So, uh, and the other thing is that, you know, all the software is not online, you know. So, I mean, if we can bring online software, maybe some of the problems, you know, could be resolved. But the more challenging is that, you know, I mean, we wanted to, we wanted to get the efficiency by introducing, you know, the, the mobile money. And we have achieved a bit, but not fully. Because, you know, the transaction fee of the mobile money operator is more than 2%. And the spread of microfinance operation that we have, it is also close to you know two percent. So I mean we cannot you know microfinance sector cannot bear bear the cost of you know the transactions you know. But you know again the mobile money operator they are dependent on you know the telecom authority the telecom operator. So unless you know the the uh, the ecosystem is not you know uh, uh, you know comfortable and convenient for the microfinance sector. I don't see, you know, that these mobile money operations will be scaled up, you know, I mean, considering the current, you know, transaction, transaction, you know, the rate, you know, the mobile money transaction rates, you know, that we have. Uh, uh, and the last thing that I want to say is that, you know, uh, the, the,
commitment of the of the uh, senior management is very important you know not only senior management senior management and also the field level staff like the cadet officers because they are used to have all the human centric you know approach you know uh, uh, interacting with the with the clients but whenever you know they see that you know there has been a technological intervention they are you know sometimes they are afraid of you know so i mean i mean that's why the organization needs to have you know the organizational commitment from the seniors they should be convinced eh? uh, and looking at the financial figure you know the efficiency gain and all this and also the frontline staff you know uh, they should be convinced that you know uh, you know uh, 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 they are not going to be you know penalized uh, if somebody you know doesn't have enough you know understanding and the skills in operating the mobile money so i mean the organizational perspective you know we we see that you know the two challenges you know uh, but uh, uh, currently what have, what is been done is that you know uh, the micro credit regulatory authority they are inviting you know the uh, uh, the microfinance organizations last two days back there has been a meeting with the regulatory authorities and we are pushing them to undertake it and to you know uh, direct us or to formulate a policy for the mobile money operators so that we can we can work with it within the policy framework you know and they okay. can also pursue you know with the with the mobile money operators yeah uh, thank you Faslu. i think you you illustrate very well on the one hand it's those internal issues you have to solve your staff has to uh, be motivated your your management needs to be focused on it and on the other side you also have the external world the mo your partners the operators the regulator that you have to to manage and that it's quite a complex process let's see what uh, what Leslie has to share with us um, for us in Banco Popular where uh, we can say if there's no perfect way uh, we've been working with different uh, things and with different projects like the client mobile app uh, working with data analytics and it's been really not as smooth as we thought it would um, we, I mean, with IT, we've been working, we have been uh, deciding if it's going to be a metalware, if it's going to be Zappies, if we're going to use microservices, how we're going to, how we're going to work with all these different um, fintechs that we're going uh, working around. Um, one of the biggest challenges that we have um, seen, as uh, our, my colleague Andre said, is that cultural change. With the project of the client, in the client application form, it has been something that we have found so much resistance from, from our credit advisors, from our agents, in which they just, um, they're asking, why do I have to do it? I mean, could any, they, they say that it's not easy. They say that they're wasting their time. So um, they, we've, we've um, approached them with different uh, training, we're in constant training trying to teach them what the importance of um, the value that they have um, in this project, why they have to own the project, the benefits that they're going to have. Uh, are going to have. For example, uh, they can reach more clients so they will have a better income. So um, that's something that we're, we're, we're constantly working out with them because they are a front line and, and allowing them to be the front line um, it allows us to reach our client and not only with this project in particular that we're working on right now but at the same time uh, we use um, our agents to teach our clients uh, the importance of using certain like for example the e-wallets or the different channels that we have so it's something that we have to work with uh, with them and it's not it's been really painful I can I can say that we have been working in this project for almost uh, for almost a year, and the past three months have been something that um, we have identified. For example, that um, we have a different me means to to reach them. We use even a, we we even have a WhatsApp chat through where they communicate with us. They give us a, our client feedback and what the client thinks about um, them being on the, on the cell phone because we were afraid that the clients would think that um, by them using the cell phone, they were thinking that, they, that the, the client, the advisor, instead of uh, trying to be uh, working with them, they were like on Facebook or working or playing with uh, different games on the cell phone. So it's something that we're constantly working with. Um, we also have created this platform. Uh, we call it Puson de Iniciativas, 
which is um, where our employees can send us all the initiatives. They can send us um, feedback of what the, they believe about the projects. So we can be a, so they can feel part of this process, and it, it allows us to to work uh, to be better each day and learn from uh, from the lessons we've done or things that mistakes that we've done. Because we have encountered a lot of things that maybe we didn't think about them before, but now it's like okay, we didn't know about that. Maybe our core had to had to have an upgrade because we're using all these apps, and so it's been something that's a daily on a daily basis. We have to be learning um, through this process. And it's very interesting to hear that there's no. It's not apparently. A a perfect way or a way that goes straight. You you apparently are learning all the time and you may have to change your direction and be a bit agile. One yes. of the things that, that is I'm wondering on your site it says enforce KPIs. What do you mean with that? Because yes. um we want it to measure in how if we are reaching the goals for for any for every of the projects that we are in, that, or initiatives are implementing, for example. One of the goals of, of, of that we had uh, with this um, application to the mobile devices was to, instead of um, of giving our clients 24 hours response, we uh, downloaded to four four hours. So we are actually on that road. We are working on it, and it's been great for us. We have um, many agents that have uh, uh, doubled their incomes because they've reached more clients and they can be more efficient. So it's really important for us to measure it. Because um, we need to learn, we, we have to see where we're going, or as, as you said, it's important for us to see um, what we're doing wrong. And uh, if we did this wrong, uh, wh how can we uh, make it better with the next project? Because every project has its own um, uh, component, so it's, it's, it's different. So maybe with one we're going to do in no way, um, we actually uh, implemented agile methods in, in, in our projects. Um, we have, uh, we, we uh, try to characterize it like this project can be done in like in two weeks. Uh, okay, we do it this way. So it's been something that we've been learning through all this um, this time, and and it's really important for us to be is focus on our clients and well as our employees, because uh, this change management is not only on our employees. It's to um, make our customers uh, know about that technology, because not, not all of them are interested, actually. There may, many of them have, have told us that they want to go to the different offices that we manage. So, and we understand that. That's not a problem for us. So we have to change their behavior. And that's something that we're learning. It's something that ah. it's on a daily basis. Thanks a lot, Leslie. I think changing behavior is very hard for for everybody both yourselves and to try all the, to let all this change um meanwhile before we go to pierre simon just um just two things first of all uh i think we would like to uh we'll need about 10 more minutes extra time for before we can really finalize this panel, this uh, webinar so i hope you can stay with us um, and another thing, and we had this poll asking the the audience about uh, what do they think is the greatest challenge. And and um, for those who, who participated, uh, two things that uh, that stand out, or let's say one of the things that stands mostly out, and I would like to ask Pierre 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 Marie also to take uh, that into account is. The key challenge is that you have the resources dedicated to tra digital transformation as a key challenge. Um, but um, that, so I hope that Pierre and Marie can also comment on that. But first, of course, looking to hear your key learnings when digitizing. Thank you, Herra. Uh, for sure, we have learned a lot. This list could be uh, much bigger than this slide. We have spent uh, millions and millions of euros, and uh, we thought that starting in 2014, we will be much more advanced than now. However, um, it's very, I think we, we have very like valuable learnings. I think the first one, uh, I called it uh, human touch. Um, so basically the most performing products were the one that were, that would combine the best of the people. I mean, the capacity of a loan officer to build trust with a client is, is valuable and no machine can do that. Um, and the other thing is the best of the machine. So an algorithm that can uh, evaluate in just uh, uh, one second, uh, 15 years of uh, track record of a client is highly valuable and no loan officer, even, even if he's a math genius, can do that. So um, 
I think that the the two products that I've described uh, um, recently, the Nano Loan and the Loan Renewal process, uh, are both combining really the best of the people in the machine, and uh, and they have, they they, are, they were the one the, the most performing, I would say. Um, then the second learning, uh, it's the buy-in from the operation. I might be a little biased here because I spent seven years in Africa within the operations department. Uh, and now I'm on the other side of the road in the digital transformation uh, team. Uh, so I've seen both ways, but for sure that's something that uh, we, 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 we cannot skip. Like the, the operation, so basically it's just a small team uh, of people in the innovation and technology in Paris and uh, within the countries. A small team trying to change the way 3,000, 4,000 people are working on a daily basis and have been working like this for, for, for several years. And uh, we know that it's stressful and it's a hard work, microfinance, really. So it's hard to change. It's hard to change, especially uh, when um, you have different time scale. I mean, the, on the operations, they want short-term results because you have the bonus at the end of the month and you cannot miss one month, otherwise it's a catastrophe. Um, and within the innovation technology team, you, you see long-term results. So you have that, and then you have a pro an issue with trust. There are people with different backgrounds. People with technology background are not the same than people within the operation, so you need to build trust uh, within the staff. Uh, that takes time. That takes time. That takes effort. That takes resources. Uh, but uh, I think that um, we can do it, and I think we can do it in two ways. Um, I mean, in my opinion. Huh? Uh, I think you can get the buy-in uh, by uh, convincing, really taking the time to convince operation and to convince the operation, like Leslie was saying, you need to use KPIs, I think. And you connect these KPIs with their own reality. So I'll give you one example, the loan renewal process, the business case was, uh, oh, we can save uh, three hours of time per loan officer, so that's going to save cost. The operation were not buying this business case, honestly. The shareholders did, but the, the operation on the ground, they did not. Uh, so it was hard to sell this business case. And it's only after we, de we d uh, dug into the data and we, re we realized that this loan renewal process was increasing impressively uh, retention rate like no any marketing effort has ever done in the past. And, and only this product really uh, increased the retention rate and um, the, the people on the ground in the operation, they understand how important it is to keep your clients because they understand how hard it is to, to acquire a client. Um, and so once they understood that, the, 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 the product was really, fun. they changed their, their behavior with the product and uh, they really like uh, started to, 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 to buy it, I would say. Um, and then the last, uh, the last key learning uh, is, the, is a good product is not enough. What I mean by that um, is that you can spend a lot of time designing a good product, but you need, and I think that's what Fazlul was saying as well, is you need the middle management and the top management to be fully dedicated to uh, manage this product. So again, KPIs. Like if you don't have KPIs to manage your product, you don't know where the, 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 the loss are. Like uh, I give you one example, again, with this loan renewal process. Uh, um, in any countries, uh, in every country, we have the same trends. We see that you have some branches where you have a transformation rate that is amazing, like 70, 80% of the eligible clients take this, the product. And in some other branches, same market, same product, same country, uh, you have like 20 or 30%. And when you start to ask why, it's just the implication of the management. I, I went myself in branches and I started to ask questions to the branch management about that. And I understood that they never went on the system on the information system to check, uh, to, 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 to look at this product. They were never trained and they never really spent the time doing that. So um, I think it's, it's a key effort. Like basically the message is you can spend millions of euros uh, investing in technology, uh, save a bit of money to invest in like a team that will uh, do the change management. Okay, that is... Uh... That is interesting. So we should not forget about that we have to invest in making the change happen. Um, I can see there's a lot of, uh, there, there are questions in the chat box, but also a lot of them have already been, uh, been responded. I would like to take uh, one question also to ask to all panelists uh, to finalize this session. Um, 
it's it's asked is there evidence emerging on the cost savings for does it really um, does it really help you to save cost and add to sustainability or maybe phrased a little bit differently um, looking back at all the lessons l learned and all the troubles and all the efforts, money, sleepless nights you went through to make digital transformation steps, was it worth all of this? Andre, maybe to start with you. Uh, you, you just had me laughing out loud. <laughs> was it <laughs> worth it? Um, I don't think we've realized the results yet. Um, I think we see a lot of um, glimmerings. So, for example, um, just by implementing call centers, um, which is a really simple thing, in Azerbaijan we reduced the direct loan processing costs from around $17 to $2. Um, in my Kosovo um, operations, I was just there last week, you know, they've reduced their, their processing time for our best performing clients from one hour to 20 minutes. Um, in Tanzania, we implemented a tablet where um, we can now completely onboard a client from beginning to end um, in about eight minutes in the field. Um, and all of that, um, I think, is, you know, we know that that has actually had a direct impact, but um, we have been investing so much in the talent that we need to manage this, in the change processes that have to be around it, um, in defining those KPIs that you have to track to. And the, the fact of the matter is um, it's been a learning process and I will candidly say um, we haven't done it very well in a lot of instances because it is new. Um, and, and so my expectation is that um, it, those benefits are really going to start um, to yield a concrete change um, for the clients that goes beyond the speed and convenience uh, in terms of the costs um, in the next, you know, year or two. Uh, but the fact is that um, scale is a critical component to being able to realize um, those benefits uh, at, from the cost perspective. And so um, we also have to grow and we are all working in environments that are more or less contracting um, and pretty volatile. And so um, we need everyone to be very supportive and very patient um, as these institutions are transforming and digitizing both with the learning process, um, but also with the reality of the macroeconomic environments that we're in today. Fazlul, thank you, Andre, for being so open and candid. Fazlul, your uh, last words for the webinar. Was it worth it? No, I mean, uh, uh, thank you for arranging this. You know, I mean, it is very wonderful, you know, learning from, you know, other panelists and also the questions from the participants, you know, it is very learning tool and they asked a lot of questions. Uh, we also, you know, try to respond, you know, some of the questions, you know. Uh, I mean, it is very... But I mean, the last would, uh, you know, comment is that, you know, uh, I support, you know, and I agree fully with the comments, you know, from my colleagues made that it is a very nascent stage of, you know, the uh, getting the efficiency because we uh, started, you know, the mobile money operations and we have to wait to, you know, see the results, you know, the ultimate results of it. And I believe that, you know, the isolated kind of activities is not enough, you know, and with, until and unless the total ecosystem is supportive, you know, towards, you know, the mobile money operations in any country, you know. Uh, so, I mean, it is starting from the regulator, starting from the other, you know, uh, business activities so that people can use, you know, uh, uh, the mobile, mobile money for different purposes. So, I mean, when they will get the benefit of it, then obviously the microfinance operations will be also getting the benefit out of it. So, again, you know, thank you very much for organizing this webinar. Over to Lessie. How do you see all the investments and efforts compared to the benefits? Um, we're actually, um, it's kind of a certain at this moment, but at the same time, eh, even though we were doing this for several years, we are already seeing some results. Um, we have all the support from our board because they can see eh, some, some, as I said, these benefits that already can be tangible. 
For example, in, by digitizing the process, we have seen um, that for something so easy as a chatbot through Facebook, through Facebook has allowed us to um, reach many on bank Hondurans that use social media, many of the millennials that we call, right? So um, this, this uh, Hondurans have reached us through, through Facebook, and um, even though they have no records, um, we, we, we talked to them, we, re we have reached them personal with our agents, and um, now they are clients. So um, even though it's something that's really small, but we can see results. So as I said, we have the support of, all, of our board. Um, we're actually investing in the, our, our employees' profile, we are an area that's um, growing. Um, we have uh, new talents. Um, we're working with data, with data analytics. Um, we have um, certain things that we're uh, implementing in order for us um, to even have more results. Uh, I know there's a lot of money that's, uh, that has to be managed, but as I said, we have the support of our board, and it's something that we're, we're going to be keep going. And um, Nothing. Not, I believe we are going to see the, even more results in the okay. years that come. Okay, good to hear. But you need a long breath. That's what I get from you. <laughs> Pierre Marie, was it worth it? Um, I, I would say yes. I mean, if we, if you think short term, like over the course of five years, no, it costs much more money than uh, it brought. It costs much more pain. And, uh, um, and the management spent a lot of time on this. It could have spent this time on other things. Um, but if you look at the 20 years or even more uh, uh, scope, of course it's worth it because I don't think it's a choice, digital transformation. I mean, in our countries, the, the penetration rate of mobile phone or smartphone is impressive. The use of internet is the same. Uh, people, uh, clients are, are more, I mean, look at, look at the way it is in the Western world and in Asia. Like uh, people are, people are, um, uh, are like, oh, like they are, they've been changing very fast in terms of like uh, demand, you know, they don't want to wait for two weeks or three weeks now to get a loan, you know, so maybe in Africa, you still have some people that, that can do that because they don't really have a choice, but in a few years, they will, they will, Mo mobile money, uh, mobile uh, operators are coming to the market, they want to become banks, um, fintech uh, are there, so I think uh, I think banks are going to move at some point. Uh, I think it's just not a choice. We 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 have to. Clients uh, uh, already want it, you know. Okay. Thank you. Um, I think this is it's it has been very interesting and very nice that you are so open about let's say the what you have achieved, but also what you went through and that that you shared that there were an enormous amount of lessons learned. What I find very interesting, we have hardly talked about hard IT challenges. It has been all about um, change management. It was about uh, managing your regulators, having a clear view and a long breath, um, focusing very much um, about, and then focusing a lot on engaging and motivating your own staff and making sure you provide useful and relevant services to your to your clients. Um, I would like to thank the panelists very much for their open, openness and everything they shared. I would like, of course, to, um, to um, thank all the uh, participants to this webinar for their interest and involvement. Um, and uh, there will be an email um, available soon on and uh, on about this webinar and of course there will be a, a, a next webinar in this series and with those words I would like to say uh, have a good day